Hello everyone. In the last video we took a look at the variables that are built into each object that is available to you in Lemur. And at this point I think we're ready to start looking at the attributes of objects. The thing is, attributes are a bit trickier to discuss because they require a bit more scripting knowledge than we've talked about so far. If this section seems a bit more difficult to understand, it's because we are starting to move into a bit more advanced topics. But hopefully I can take things at a good speed and help everyone be able to understand comfortably. So as usual, let's start where we left off. We've discussed variables extensively, and so far you've seen two types of variables. You've seen variables that are built into objects, such as x, y, and z, and you've also seen variables that we've created ourselves, the ones with these green dots, which we've created by pressing the Create Expression button. There's actually a third type of variable which can only be found inside of a script. Let's take a look at a sample of what that looks like. If I click on a script that I've created called set object name var, which stands for set object name variable, there are two lines in the script. Let's just pay attention to the first line because to be honest we'll wind up deleting it in a moment and I'll tell you why. The first four letters say DECL. That stands for declare. Before you can use a variable that exists inside of a script, you must declare it. You can declare it with a value or without a value. But the thing is, any variables that you declare inside of a script only exist while that script is running. When the script finishes running, the variable disappears, as well as any value that was stored inside of it. Another thing to note is that any variables declared inside of a script using DECL can't be monitored using a monitor object. And if you think about it, monitoring variables inside of your scripts would be a very helpful way to see what's going on with your script and to help verify that it's working correctly. So what we're going to do as we discuss the various attributes of objects is we're going to be creating variables inside of objects. We're going to be pressing this button, creating a variable, and then using a monitor to view that variable's value. So let's look at an example. Clicking on my fader object, and once again opening our script, I'm going to go ahead and delete this first line. Now the first word you see in the script is my name. Note how that matches with the name of our variable that we've created inside of fader. Also note that my name, as we've created it, actually has no value. And that's totally fine. When we create variables in lemur, often we'll use scripts to store values in them, and we will never actually see anything written in this script inspector window when looking at a variable. So let's go back to our script. We've set my name equal to some value. What have we put over here? Get attribute, get object, name. Well first let's talk about get object. Get object is a special function that lets us refer to the object that our script is inside of. In this case, the get object function would refer to fader 4. If we were to look at a different fader, for example fader 3, we see get attribute, get object once again. In this case, get object would cause the script to refer to fader 3. Back to fader 4's script, we're using a function called get attribute. Get attribute lets us get the value of a particular attribute of an object. In this case, we're asking for the name of the object. So we said get the attribute of, which object are we referring to? the object that our script is currently sitting inside of, and from that object, get its name, and put that value into the myName variable. Well, the myName variable is right here, which means we should be able to use a monitor to view that value. If I click on this monitor, you'll see that that's exactly what we're doing. For the monitor's value, we've had it display fader4.myName. This is exactly the same format as we've seen in the past where we set a monitor to show a built-in variable of an object. Since I've changed it to x, if I move my slider, it's obviously showing the x variable's value. If I change it back to my name, now it's showing the value of the my name variable instead. So I realize that a lot of these ideas are really interconnecting and it's not always possible to explain things in a linear fashion. Hopefully I'm being clear, but again, I do recommend that if you find any of this confusing, you go back and watch it just one more time, and I really believe it'll make more sense. 
Now that you understand variables and the get object function, let's briefly take a look at how this second slider was set up. If we view the script that's inside of fader3, set object name variable, we see that we're setting object name, which is the variable that we've got right here inside of fader3, to be equal to get attribute, get object, name. So once again, we're doing exactly the same thing as we did in the previous script, and that is get the current object, which in our case now is fader3, and get the attribute of that object called name, and store the result into the object name variable. Monitor3 then displays the value of the object name variable as shown here. Okay, I think that's clear enough. Let's move on to the next function called get attribute list. Just as it's written here with get attribute list, you're going to type get attribute list and then in parentheses the object name. First, take a look at the monitor. Before I click on it, can you guess based on what you see? First, let me just open up the fader 2 here. Can you guess based on what you see how this is working? Note that we have an attribute list variable. We have a monitor. So it's highly likely that our monitor is displaying fader2.attribute list. If I click on it, we see that that's exactly what it's doing. If we take a look at the script that's inside of the fader2 object, I'm sure you've guessed by now that it's setting the attribute list variable equal to here's our new function, get attribute list. And then inside of that, we've placed the get object function. Now note that instead of get object, we could refer to the object's name, fader2. And note that that would give us the exact same result. If I were to create a different type of object, such as a knob, and then modify fader2's script to say, please give me the attribute list of this knob that we've just created instead. First, let's confirm the name of our knob, knob2. Okay, well, I could easily just change this to knob2 instead. Since the monitor is still looking at the attribute list variable, which is inside of fader2, and since the script is still assigning the value of whatever it gets from the attribute list function to this attribute list variable, which is in fader2, we still see the results appear here with no problem and no change needed to the monitor. Note that the list is different than it was for our fader objects list of attributes. Each type of object has a different set of attributes, and so that's going to be the main topic of what we'll look at from here on out. I'm not sure how many we'll get through in a single video. I don't want to make it too overwhelming, but we'll take them one at a time and discuss how they work. Let me fix my script back to how it was and point it back to fader2 instead. Or, as we did originally, we could just say get object, open close parentheses. So we've already mentioned the get attribute function several times. Here it is again, get attribute, then our object name, comma, then our attribute name in single quotes. Here we're looking at a different attribute. Here we're looking at the attribute called rect, which stands for rectangle, and that refers to the bounding box that represents each object's location in the interface, as well as its width and height. If we click on this monitor, we see that it's referring to fader5.myrect. Let's take a look at fader5. In here we see we've got a myrect variable. We've also got a set myrect function that we've created, function or script. Here we've set the myrect variable equal to, once again, get attribute, get object, and then instead of name, we're asking for the rect attribute of the object. Now we know that a fader has a rect attribute because it appears in the monitor here where we've asked lemur to give us the full list of all the attributes that this fader object has. Since every fader object is the same, obviously this fader has the same attributes. And in fact, you'll see that every object has a rect attribute. The format of the rect is the upper left corner's x-coordinate and y-coordinate, followed by the width and the height of the object. Finally, we have a very similar function called setAttribute. SetAttribute, as you might have already guessed, instead of getting the value of an attribute, we're setting the value of the attribute. Now note that not every single attribute can be set using setAttribute. 
For example, it wouldn't make sense to set the name of the object because if you change the name of the object, that breaks any scripts that refer to that object. So Lemur doesn't let you do that. But I'd say that most, if not all, of the others allow you to change their attributes using the setAttribute function. The format of it is very similar to the getAttribute function. We only need one additional bit of information, and that's the new value that we'd like to pass in in order to set the attribute to that value. So we say set attribute, open parentheses, the name of our object. Again, we could say either the name of the object or just get object if we're referring to the object that our script is inside of. Then we pass the attribute name in quotations, just as before with get attribute. And finally, we put our new value at the end. Now, here we have one that does not have single quotes around the new value, and here we have one that does have single quotes around the new value. And that will depend on whether the value that you're passing in is a string or not. Now I know we haven't mentioned strings. A string is basically a set of characters, such as a name. There are other types of data that you can store into an attribute, such as an RGB color. For RGB colors, how would you describe that in words? You really couldn't. And in fact, you actually use a separate function just to create that RGB value. We'll talk about that later as well. All right, with this introduction out of the way, I plan to move on to our first three attributes, name, rect, and color. All right, I admit this screen has quite a bit on it. Um, it's not as bad as it looks, don't worry. Let me just briefly go over what we've got going on here. In this bottom section, I've got every control that has the name, rect, and color attributes. Now essentially this is every control that we've seen so far, right? We've got our breakpoint, we've got a container object, fader, knob, text object, pads, range object, switches, here's a custom button, some LEDs, a multi-slider object, multi-ball, a monitor, a menu, a ring area, a signal scope, and a surface LCD. I know we haven't talked about some of these objects in detail yet, but the fact that they all share these three attributes in common is the reason you see them on this page. Now at the top left, I've got a few things going on. I've got a text box, I've got a monitor, and I've got another text box. These are going to let us take a look at these three attributes one at a time. I've set up these three buttons to where if I press them, they'll show the name, rect, and color of the object that's underneath the button. If I click on this one, we see the container as well as its rect and color. I could have made a button for every object on the page, but that would have just taken up too much space. The scripts that I've set up would work for any of these objects, and I'll show you now how they work. Let's click on one of the buttons and open it up in our project. Here the script we see is called get breakpoint name. If we look inside, we see a function called set attributes. We've seen that Lemur does actually have a set attributes function, but there are two differences between what you see here and the built-in function. First off, to Lemur, a set attributes function with a lowercase a and a set attributes function with an uppercase a are two completely different functions. Secondly, you notice that here we just are passing breakpoint into set attributes whereas we previously saw that the built-in set attributes function expects three separate values, the name of the object, the name of the attribute, and then the name of the value we want to pass in. So I just wanted to make it clear here that this is not the built-in function set attributes, this is our own function set attributes with a capital A and only a single parameter. Let me show you something else I've already set up. Up at the top you see something called set attributes and in parentheses object. What we can do when we create a script and set its name is we can also set parameters ourselves. Then when we call the script that we've created, we can pass in any object and that script can perform actions on that object. Let me show you how I created it. First I clicked the main container because I want the script to be created at this level. Then I pressed the script button, typed the name of the script, followed by any parameters, parameter 1, I could use more than one if I'd like, parameter 2, and then close parentheses, and press OK. Alright, let's look at the actual script, set attributes object. First note that I've got this execution mode set to manual. That means that the script is not going to run ever automatically unless it's called by a separate script. Let's have a look at our first line. 
name attribute equals okay this must mean that we've got a name attribute variable somewhere and sure enough you can see up here at the top we have name attribute notice that we have several variables up here actually and all these variables are directly underneath the container that is this object right the container that all these objects are inside of because these variables are at the container level and not inside of a particular object any object or script can either store values in or retrieve values from any of these variables without needing to refer to any object name. Okay, let's go on with our script now. So we've seen that we have a name attribute variable. We're setting it equal to get attribute, object, and then quote name, unquote. Well, what is object? Before we saw we could put get object, open close parentheses, or we could put the actual name of an object but here we just see the word object. That's because we've defined this script to be able to take something as a parameter. In other words, the set attributes is expecting to receive a box, and the label on the outside of that box should be object. And as long as that's true, set attributes will act on anything that's inside of that box. In this case, for this button and its script, get breakpoint name. We have called the function set attributes and inside the box we've put the breakpoint object which is this object right here. So the breakpoint object is inside of the box that we've just sent over to the set attributes function. The set attributes function doesn't care what's inside of that box it's going to act on that box no matter what's inside of it. If there's an error there will be an error but we're going to write our script so that there is no error obviously. So, long story short, when you see object here, the script is actually referring to the breakpoint object in this case because the script inside of the button object called the set attribute function and passed the breakpoint object to it. Let's keep going. Now the next line I have, you can probably barely see it, I have it commented out with two forward slashes. For some reason Lemur chose a very horrible green color to display their comments in so it's difficult to see. Basically for the next section, the rect attribute, there are two different ways you can get it. You can either use the get attribute function just as we've done with name and just as you've seen in the past, or we can actually use a special shortcut function that's available called get object rect and simply pass the object in. It's not necessarily important to know this, but it does look a bit cleaner to write in your code if you'd like to get the rect attribute of an object. So we've taken the rect attribute and stored it into the rect attribute variable which is located right up here. Next we take the color attribute and we store it into the color attribute variable. We use the get attribute function with the color attribute passed in. Okay so those are our three get attribute variable assignments within this script. We've assigned three different values to the variables and now two out of three of them we're going to use set attribute to apply them to text boxes. One of those attributes though called rec can't be displayed directly using a text object so we'll use a monitor to display its value. But first let's look at the code. We say set attribute name text so name text is what we've called this top text box. You can see that the name is name text. So we're setting the attribute, we're calling in the name text object, we put in quotes content. Now content within a text object is what's actually displayed as text on the screen. If I were to create a text object here and type something into this box, here it says text on the left side. The actual name of the property is content with a lowercase c. Looking back at our script again. So we're passing in content as the attribute we'd like to affect. Now here we're doing something a little bit different than we saw before, and we're using the plus symbol. With the plus symbol, you can put together two different strings. In other words, two different pieces of text. First, we'd like to have name colon space, but then after that, we'd like for it to display the actual name attribute, which we've assigned up here on our first line. So we want to display the breakpoint's name in this area. The result is that we get name colon. Let me go ahead and run this. Oops. <laughs> this happens often. You can accidentally start adding to your script. 
and delete something by mistake. Okay, let me actually run the script again so we can see the break, the breakpoint details. So here it says name colon breakpoint, which is the name of this object. And that's as far as we've gotten with the set function. Okay, now we have our second set attribute, color text. Color text is the name of our third text box right here, color text. In this case, we're setting the color attribute and we're passing in color attribute. Now color attribute is what we just got from our get attribute function of the breakpoint object. So that's passing whatever the breakpoint's color attribute holds into the color attribute of the actual text box itself. So that's why when we click these different buttons, we see the color of the text box change. The words don't change, but the color of the box itself actually changes by using that color property. By the way, if you hear me using the words property and attribute interchangeably, I just use them to mean the same thing. Okay, so that's actually all that the script does. The last bit of magic happens just because we're using a monitor to display the rect attribute variable. The rect attribute variable is obviously right here, so we don't need to use a you know, object name dot rect attribute. It's just available straight up as rect attribute. And so we use a separate plain old text box to just say rect colon and then um, I just spaced it out a little bit to make it look the same as the others. Okay, so that's a lot and I'm not going to go through it in as much detail as that again but let's just briefly go over it once more on a different object so we can see how this works. Alright, get container name. The first thing you notice is that it looks identical to the script that we had on the other button. The first button was running this script set attribute breakpoint. This one's saying set attribute container. So it's identical in what it's doing, but instead of passing the breakpoint object in, it's passing the container in. Once again, set attribute doesn't care what it's getting. It's going to treat everything as object. So for the container object, it goes through exactly the same steps as it did for the breakpoint object. It gets the name, the rect, in this case, we're actually getting the rect twice unnecessarily, but this was just for demonstration. And then the color. It sets the name and the color of the first and third text boxes re respectively. And then, of course, the monitor gets updated automatically because it's continually monitoring the value of the rect attribute. And the rect attribute was just assigned by this script. So that means we can click this button or this button or this button. Oops, I missed the second one. So here's a good case of debugging. I pressed my button and nothing happened. And the problem was, in fact, we want the script to execute whenever the button gets pressed. So we really should have said on expression and then changed this to X. All right, so now, as I was saying, you can press any of these buttons and it'll update. Now what if we wanted to choose just a random object on the screen and have one of these buttons display its information on the top left? Well, because of the very flexible way that we set up this set attributes function, all we have to do is change what's inside of our call to set attribute. Just put a different object name in here. For example, what if we wanted to see the information for the multiball? Well, we could just type in here multiball instead. And now this button actually refers to the multiball. When I press it, you'll see multiball, you'll see the multiballs location and size as well as the color of it. If we change the color of the multiball to something else, it won't update automatically because this is a trigger based script. But once I press the button, it updates. Alright, as always, there's so much to cover, but I don't want to make this video too long and I think I've already provided enough detail for one video, so I'm not going to cover any more attributes in this video. I hope these videos are still enjoyable for you. Please leave comments. I really enjoy your feedback. If you're finding this type of information useful, let me know. I always appreciate it. Thanks for watching.